In September of 2021, Apple released this phone the iPhone 13 mini. The 13 mini was the second iteration of the mini iPhone lineup following the debut of the 12 mini and it was also sadly the last of its kind as Apple put the kibosh in the whole small iPhone concept as sales really never took off for either variant. In a world where phones kept getting bigger and bigger, it's not exactly surprising that a petite phone like this didn't exactly break sales records. And man, people didn't even give the mini iPhone a fair shot. Most just assumed it wouldn't be a good choice for them given the general trend smartphones were going in. So only a select few actually got to experience what it's like using an iPhone as unique as this one. But for those who are brave enough to take a chance with the iPhone 13 mini know that not only is this a great iPhone, it's probably one of the best Apple has ever made. And even two years later, despite all the glitz and glamour with the shiny new titanium iPhone 15 Pros, I feel as though the 13 mini may be Apple's last truly great iPhone for a multitude of reasons. Now, if you're a longtime follower of the channel, you've heard me say this like a thousand times, but it needs to be said again, the small size and form factor of the iPhone 13 mini is one of its greatest strengths, not a weakness. And I reiterate this point because I think it's really easy to assume that a phone with dimensions like this is flawed in some sort of way. Again, it's just so different from the rest of the smartphone population that I think it makes people feel a bit sus right out the gate. But the iPhone 13 mini's form factor is widely appreciated for those that actually bought the phone. Its compact and sleek design makes it an ideal choice for users who prefer a small and more pocket-friendly device. And the thing is, I think most people don't even realize that a smaller form factor is what they actually prefer for. I know I didn't until I physically got the iPhone 13 mini and actually started using it. The compact size of the 13 mini not only enhances the portability, but also offers a comfortable grip, allowing users to navigate the device with ease using just one hand, a very underrated feature that not many phones can boast in today's market. The 5.4 inch display delivers stunning visuals despite the smaller screen size, and the phone maintains a high quality viewing experience, mainly because of the edge to edge design. It's just enough screen real estate to get you immersed into what whatever you're watching, and it doesn't feel like you're missing out on anything. And the iPhone 13 mini stands out for its exceptional build quality in no way straying from Apple's commitment to precision and premium craftsmanship. Encased in the durable ceramic shield front cover and the aerospace grade aluminum frame, the 13 mini exudes a bona fide flagship build. The glass back, designed with precision milled edges, not only contributes to the phone's structural integrity, but also maintains a touch of elegance that iPhones are known for. The IP68 water and dust resistance rating further underscores the phone's durability, ensuring that it can withstand the challenges of daily use. And even two years later, the iPhone 13 mini's build quality reflects Apple's dedication to creating devices that are not only technologically advanced, but also exquisitely designed and built to last. Now, it's not all sunshine and rainbows with the 13 mini, and I'm gonna be careful how I phrase this. If this phone has any limitation, not a flaw, a limitation, it's gotta be its battery life. With a frame this small, you can't squeeze in the largest battery, and despite the class-leading optimization and efficiency Apple has been able to accomplish with their integrated software and hardware, two years later, I'm averaging around six and a half hours of battery life on the 13 mini. That's actually pretty respectable given the physics here and enough to get you through a full day of moderate use, but it may get a bit sporty if you are a power user. Now, if you do find yourself in need of a midday charge, there's a ton of portable power banks you can choose from, but probably none as cool as this one. This is the Shark Geek 100 Storm 2, the world's first transparent power bank that looks absolutely unreal. I never even thought that a portable battery could even look remotely interesting, but being able to see all the circuitry inside and the batteries themselves in the see-through housing makes the Storm 2 hands down the coolest looking power bank in the world as we know it, and it's an absolute beast as well. Boasting a massive 25,600 milliamp hour capacity, the Storm 2 has enough juice to comfortably recharge any device that you throw at it while also being airline safe to take with with you on an airplane. It has two USB Type-C ports, one that can output at 100 watts and the other at 30. There's also a USB-A port that could charge it up to 18 watts and an adjustable DC jack for some serious universal compatibility here. And to really take the coolness of this thing to the next level, the Storm 2 is equipped with a smart IPS display that gives you a ton of useful data. It'll show you how much of a charge you have on the power bank itself, how much wattage is being output when juicing up a device, and you could even monitor the temperature of both the battery and the device that it's charging. This is leagues ahead of what the competition offers. I've truly never seen a power bank as unique and interesting as this one, and it's the perfect solution for all your charging needs. If you guys are interested in learning more about the Shark Geek 100 Storm 2 power bank, check out the link in the description, and thank you Shark Geek for sponsoring this video. Now, the other reason why the 13 mini is and continues to be a truly great device is that despite its small size, it's a no-compromise phone that still performs like a beast today. 
At the core of the 13 Mini's capabilities is the venerable A15 Bionic chip, delivering exceptional performance, efficiency, and advanced neural processing for a seamless user experience. Two years and many software updates later, my 13 Mini is still fast and completely lag-free, even when pushing it pretty hard. Apple didn't skimp on the hardware either. The 13 Mini features a stunning 5.4-inch Super Retina XDR OLED display that not only offers vibrant and detailed visuals, but also supports HDR content, providing an immersive and high high-end viewing experience. The high-quality display is probably the biggest role in terms of making the 13 mini feel a lot more premium than what it seems. A great comparison here would be with the iPhone SC models that use dated sub-1080p LCD panels that don't even come close to the quality that you're getting here. Plus, you get all the other premium flagship features on the 13 mini that all the other iPhones have, such as the Face ID security system, MagSafe capability, and a robust camera suite. Speaking of cameras, this is another reason why the 13 mini is such a rock star solid phone. Even though it may look like a toy on the outside, the camera performance on this thing is absolutely fantastic. It's equipped with Apple's tried and true dual 12 megapixel wide angle and ultra wide cameras on the back and a 12 megapixel front facing selfie camera on the other side. Now, yes, the new iPhones have jumped to their new larger megapixel sensors, which are arguably better, but the performance on these older cameras are still top notch and in many ways still better than a lot of the other phones out there. In fact, for still image photography, I'd argue that the difference here is pretty minor. It's not anywhere near a night and day difference. And one thing that I actually prefer about the 13 Mini's camera system is that it has a much much better minimum focus distance because it doesn't have the macro shooting capability. I almost never take macro shots anyways, and I get super annoyed when the newer iPhones keep switching to the ultra wide camera whenever I get remotely close to the subject. Plus the 13 mini is still stacked with robust software features such as night mode and deep fusion, which helps captures photos and videos in various different lighting conditions. And the video capability on this phone is kind of a similar story in it that it still crushes the current non iPhone competition out there and is very close to the video quality coming out of the new iPhone 15s. The video quality the 13 mini could produce is another area of the phone that two years later really in my opinion shines as one of its greatest strengths. I think it's fair to assume that a tiny phone like this is going to correspondingly give users tiny results with its cameras, but it couldn't be further from the truth. And that brings me to the last reason why the iPhone 13 mini is an absolute gem of a phone, and that's its current price. Although Apple doesn't sell the 13 mini on its website anymore, you can pick up a refurbished one on Amazon for just $429. That's a fairly affordable price for an iPhone that no doubt can still comfortably handle anything that you throw at it today. Now, I will admit, I think the reason why the mini iPhones didn't do well when they were launched was because they were just too close in price with the regular variants. They were only like a hundred bucks cheaper. If they had made it something like 150 to $200 cheaper, I think it would have done a lot better. But to me, the 13 mini two years later continues to be one of the best value packed iPhones ever made. This little guy is so deceptively good. It still surprises me to this day. Now, fingers crossed that the mini makes a triumphant return. Hopefully as the much needed overhaul to the withering iPhone SE lineup, that phone is just sad, let's just say it. Apple really shouldn't give up on this form factor. It has a serious cult following that I think if repositioned well, could gain much broader appeal. But hey, that's just me, and I know that I'm in the minority here. What do you guys think about the iPhone 13 mini? Do you think that it should make a comeback? Or do you think Apple should keep it dead forever? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you guys missed my reviews of the iPhone 15s and the 15 Pros, check them out here. They're going to help you be as informed as possible.